Hey, how's it going? This is Tim here. I hope you're doing well. Um, I've been staring at this few these few parts for about a week now, procrastinating, and uh, I've had a cup of coffee, and we're going to tackle. We're going to go in and tackle these bad boys. All right. Um, no retreat. Now, um, my AutoCAD students, this week you're going to do. We're going to do a video on this chap. We're going to do another video on this chap. And then you two, well, you're going to do both of these parts. You're going to do the at, the, at the very least, the orthographic projection, the front, top, and sides of both of them. Um, if you want to show off, which I always appreciate, you're going to actually try and do the 3D models of these two, but I'm not going to help you. That's going to be tricky. That's not going to be easy. Anyway, look let's at the very least you're gonna you're gonna do you're gonna follow me in these two videos so that's the plan for this week so what we're gonna do is um this is gonna be our front view coming in from this direction this is going to be our top view coming down from that direction and the right hand view is going to be looking in from that so hopefully that makes sense now um let's start a new drawing sheet sets manufacturing imperial and i'm going to go into model view all right and let's create a new layer and we'll call it con one and we'll make it yellow And let's get our construction line. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it at zero comma zero. Right there. And let's have a look. Is this lad recording? It is. I That's good. Okay. Now, um, let's look at this. The full extremity of this front view is going to go from 100. And it's pointing down to that very center. And then this is a diameter 36. So half of 36 is 18. So from that face there to the very edge of the edge of the little curve is 118. All right. And what are we going to do? We're going to go offset 118. And I have to zoom out. I've got to zoom out. There it is. Make sure you can see that line. And this 63 here goes from the bottom face to the very, very top face, 63. And let's make, let's, let's give ourselves a space of 60 from there. Now that's too much. We can always move it. Look, we can always move it. Let's make it 60. And we're going to make this 60. Don't be... Right. I pressed the wrong button. Right now. We want 60. Now, let's go back here for a sec. Where this is our top... Look, look, hold on a second. Let's... There's no harm in writing this stuff out we'll call this oh come on now here we go front view and it's tiny let's click on it and um what size where are we changing the size right here um what happens if we make that 20 too big 10 too big 5 here we go um i i did that fast i'm going to do that again for you all right what am i doing um text i click here i click here 
and it gives it the where I want the text to be top view it's it's I highlight the text I can change the size of it up there but the text size has to be sorry the text has to be highlighted one of the issues that I'm having is I'm drawing these really are metric measurements like an object that's 56 inches I, what I'm doing is I'm really converting these from metric to inches and everything is a lot bigger than it usually would so that's why um my my text is small my dimensions are going to be small don't get hung up with that i think i'm, I'm probably confusing you there um let's do it again one more time text first corner second corner right view i highlight it I change the size five don't worry if it makes it really really big if I click away from it it resizes it do I know why it does that I don't but I know I know a workaround hopefully I'm not confusing the crap out of you now the top view its envelope is going to be the 75 so Let's go to the construction layer. Let's make it 75. And we'll go like that. And then the right hand view is going to be the same. It's going to be this 75 as well. Hopefully you can't hear that. I have a lad, uh, whoops. I have a lad mowing grass right outside my window here. Here we go. Top view, front view, right view. I did notice with my day, with my nighttime class, that um, you're about eighty percent there on the orthographic projections, even though we're doing kind of simple enough ones. So it does it does make me think that we need to keep working on orthographic projections for another bit. Right now. Here's Oliver. Bloody hell. Now, what are we going to do? We're gonna I'm gonna draw the shape out first. Alright. That's nice and easy for me. On the front view. Let's right click here and turn this off. Now we're gonna come up 18 over 56 and down 18 18 56 18 from there we come up 18 we come over 56 we come down to that line we come over 12 up 6 and then and then come over 12 up 6 over 32 over 12 up 6 make sure you're snapping to that polar up 6 over whoops a daisies 32 down and over piece of cake now we got that we got that shape if I come up, geez, now let's think about. All right, let's think about this. All right, all right. Um, I'm still here. Now, now, come on. What's going on here? What, should we start with this? Um, 25 we come down 20 we'll we know we, we have that point if I come down 25 let's just my dog's not happy he hates um, leaf blowers and um, any sort of two-stroke engine 25 and then we come over um, what is that that's 36 
up. That's that's what that object is going to look like. That cylinder is going to look like a square when you look at it from one view. Now, if we come over from that center, let's get ourselves. If I go uh, insert, annotate, if I get a center line, is it going to make it a proper center line? Yeah, it does, but it's, the scale is off. That's all right. We just drag the point control points. LT scale. Let's make it five. We could even make it more. Ollie, buddy, come here. Good boy. We're going to put you up in the bed there. You're protecting the house. You're protecting the house. Come on. Go in the bed. Go on. Go, boy. Go in the bed. All right. No. All right. Um, we could even make that bigger. LT scale. We'll make that 20. Perfect. That's the center of that. You want to see the doggy? He's, he's looking straight out the window. Now... We have that point, we're going to come over 36. From there over 36. And then we come down to there. Like so, we just drew in that line. And this point comes all the way down to this edge right here. You don't see that. So that goes from there to there. Yeah. Now, what is this? Is twenty-two diameter twenty-two. Now, um, a lot of a lot of even I think all of you in my AutoCAD class, you forgot to put in some hidden lines. So you did a good job with the likes of this, but the next step. Is the hidden layer okay so don't think about that next time and what, what do i want you to do i want you to go did, did, did i remember to put in my hidden lines do you hear the molly bows is out there You're dead right all right um hidden now if i go offset and I make this 11 and I go from here will it offset that no it doesn't like let me offset that that's fine uh, 22 what I can do is I just go like this I'll go here I'll come over 11 whoops I'll come down click I'll bring it over 11 and I'll come down um, I like that hopefully and what does that tell us <clears throat> from this image we I don't we can assume that this hole goes all the way through the object if it didn't there would be a note saying that the depth of it is 10 or something and we would know that it went down a certain amount um, so we what these hidden lines are indicating to to a person who's viewing this is they're telling them that whatever is cutting through this object it goes all the way through all right that's why those hidden lines are important now we have let's i'll tell you what let's we'll draw the top view we'll put the two circles in and we'll project them down now um I'm going to project some lines up from the bottom. That that point there. Let's start with that. <coughs> Oi, Ali, calm down, right? We're going to draw this rectangle in. Ali, 
Stop now. Let's just move this down a little bit. He, Ollie will be quiet now in a few minutes. They're, they're nearly done. All right. Um, okay. We will draw. We will get this circle in. That's the next thing. We got that. We will get these two circles in. Now. Um, can I can I get a center line here? We'll pick up that midpoint. No, it won't. Um, anyway, I'm picking the wrong line. Now, from here to here is 75. 37.5, isn't this? 37.5. Now, is the halfway. 37.5. There's that center line. And we will project this up. And that will give us the center of those two circles. Back to zero, circle, from there to there, we get another circle, from there, and D for diameter, 22. Now in fairness, I should have drawn that circle first, and then projected it down, instead of having to do all that maths. And I'll just get rid of that little line there. Okay. Alright. Okay. Now, this is called a rib. We have a base feature here with two circles, and then a big, a little, a little cylinder here. The cylinder is in air. It's been held up there by this rib. You're going to see these, this line, all of these lines, and that line, and that line. Its thickness is 12. So, um, what am I doing here? Let's get an let's get an offset. We make it six. And it's going to look something like this. I'm going to go from there to here and there. To here and you see where this point is can I do this can I go like this and track it up good lad good boy and you're saving me work right there bang to that did you see what I did there I'm not clicking here I'm just I'm not I'm going I'm not going out of my way I'm like there you it puts it into like memory and says oi Remember that point AutoCAD, and I drag it all the way up, and then I click, and then I click. And what that, what this line indicates, it indicates that there's a, a there's a, it's a different face. And you can see it's that line right there that I'm after drawing in. Now, you can see, whoops, come on now, this is a continuous face. There's no edge there. So what do I need to do here? I trim, I press enter, and I go bang, bang, and it's gone. Let's draw in the two circles. Now, there, I come up 28, and then I come over 15 to come in there. 28 and 15. Offset, 28, and I'm just going to, I do. I like to do stuff like this because I'm lazy, I'm just going to put in a, a temporary line, I'll just come down here 15, and I'm going to come up 15. Are you alright Ollie? What are you doing? What are you doing? Get up there, come on now, come on. get up there, come here, come on, up here, inside here. Inside, inside, behave, sit, good boy, 
Alright, let's have a look. I'm going to get the two circles. Now, what, what size are the circles? Uh, diameter 12. One, uh, D for diameter, 12. D for diameter, 12. And let's get rid of that line there. It's, we don't need it anymore. It's done its job. What are we going to do now? We're going to project the circles down to the front view. Like so. Now, what type of lines do we need to have here? We need to tell the viewer that when we see some circles here, these go all the way through. So we should probably get the hidden, hidden layer going. And make sure we get our snaps and our snap. All right. Now I'm going to go LT scale. I'm going to make this 25. No, that's too much. Up to get the, the re most recent command. Enter. We make it 15. That's better. That's about right there now. Do we have everything in the top and the front views? No, we don't. I'm going to project. We have a little indentation here. What would you call that? A cutout in the bottom base. We don't. We we haven't. We haven't drawn it in here. You would see. If we look straight down from the top, we there's a bottom base that goes all the way through. Okay. It goes all the way through. Now, is there anything indicating that in this drawing? No. But we can just... Trust me, I've done enough of these type of drawings. We know it goes all the way through. This is why you have more views. Now, um, this is why you need to have a lot of views to, to keep, truly communicate what's going on. This cutout, we need to indicate that it goes all the way from one end to the other end. That's why we have the hidden lines. And where is the cutout? We don't know. Is it here? Is it here? We don't know. We go to our construction layer and we project the, these lines up. And then we come over here and we have our hidden lines. I remember a long time ago when I learned this first and it was in, it was in university believe it or not I, I had never done it in high school and I remember I could always I could always figure out where the what did we call them the main lines were the important lines the conti the, the, the the continuous lines I kind of knew where the hidden lines were supposed to go and the ones I was a bit confused with is when I used to use the center lines. So I get I get how you're feeling. Um, and just just keep chipping away at it. Well, it'll it'll all fall into place. So I'm going to turn off the construction layer now, and we're left with these two views. No, let let's do this. I'm I'm just going to delete some of those lines. We don't really need them. They've done their job. Let's just get the main ones in. Let's leave the, the main lines like so. Now the right view. Is, this is going to be the hardest one. Let's save this first of all. Now what, what example is this? This is example 17. Thank God we're nearly getting towards the end. I get all this motivation at the start of the class to do vi video after video. But by geez, after a few videos you get tired of them. And then you don't see me for a few years. Example 17. Now, um, let's 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 do something easy for a second. Center marks. This is a new tool. I don't know how long this tool has been here, but it is nice. Yeah, and then a center line. Boop. Boop. What does the center line communicate? It tells us that that's the center of, that is the center of 
the circle. Wherever you have a center line like that, it means there's something revolved or a circle, a curve or something. All right, let's, let's look at, so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine, this is the front of the house, we're a bird flying over the top of the house, and now we're walking around to the right, and we're looking in at the right hand side. So let's draw the base, what it would look like. Okay. The base... I'm going to I'm going to track this point and bring it across the person who came up with that idea in AutoCAD who came up with that tracking idea I hope you're living large you should be now because it's a good thing um, when we look in from this direction here you should see a rectangle just a rectangle you're not going to see this cutout Okay, so we see the rectangle. You're going to see, when we look in from this direction, you're not going to see a nice curved circle. It's not going to look like a curved circle. It's going to look like a rectangle when you close one eye and you look at it from a distance. It's going to look like this. But we need, we need a center line. Now what is this? We need 37.5, right there. And what is this? This is 18 and 18. From there we come over 18. We come down, watch this, I'm gonna track this point. See what I'm doing? Um, what is this 36 we come up to there and to there hopefully you understand why when we look at this right view why this is a rectangle and um, that's what it looks like if you look at it if you look at it purely from one direction and you close your eyes now, granted, in the real world, you have sh you're going to have shading and you're going to have light on it, but that's what the view looks like. It it even though it's curved, like this, from a purely right hand view, it's going to look like a rectangle. You're look you're seeing the extremities of each of the the curve as it curves back. I'd probably just confuse you even more, but anyway, um. Now, what do we see when we look in from this direction? You're not going to actually see these lines because they're hidden. They're behind everything, but we're going to have to put them in. But you're going to see that line down to there. Oh, I love it. See, this is, it's, this is nice. You're going to see this line here. So, this is going to separate the men from the boys and the... Men from the boys, I don't know the other could anyway. It's gonna separate the the sharp ones from the ones who need to work keep working at this. But that's alright. Now what is it? It's twelve. So if you already know if maybe you do, I don't know. Anyway, twelve. You're probably thinking to yourself, stop talk, talk stop talking shy Tim, will you? Now we're going to go from there down to there. Is that correct? Is that enough? Or do we need to bring it down to the bottom? What do you think? We need to bring it down to the bottom because you'll see it. Okay? You'd see it from this view. Let's see if I can even do that. I've had a large cup of coffee already, right? And I have like the jitters from the cup of coffee, but I feel like I need still need another one. Um... Maybe I'm making the coffee too strong. Now, that's that ridge. That's that ridge right there. Now, the rest of it, 
behind the scenes, you're going to have a hidden line. Now, I, I remember whenever you have a main line, it takes precedence over the hidden line. Okay, so there's there's a rib there's a rib back here that that that, that it's it's there in real life. If I put in a hidden line and it goes like here, if I put that in and I also want to draw it here, you don't. The main line takes precedence over the hidden line. Okay? You're like, what the hell is Tim saying? So let's just turn this off for a second. Do you hope the main thing is you understand that this rib is this cylindrical shape, there's a rib behind it. The hidden line keeps on going and it comes down to there. Even if we draw this in, you're not going to see it because the main line overrides it anyway. It, it just draws over it. This is what it looks like from the right view. Um, try and get your head around that. This cutout here. We need to indicate on this view that it goes all the way through. So let's draw a line and let's track that point to there and bring it across. Um, this is 22. So 22. So from, so from there, lovely, over 11, and down from here, over 11, and down. Can I get rid of those lines that we just, smart. These lines indicate the extremity of the whole cutout. These lines indicate the rib that is hidden behind this shape. Let's let's annotate, put in a center line from there to there. Tricky enough. Now we need to show the position of two holes. These two holes. Now, I'm going to get another, um, this trick only works, let's delete those lines, is if this distance is equal to this distance. Because if the distances are different, you're going to scale it up. It's going to be wonky. Now, let's get um, a construction line. Let's make it angular. No, no, hold on a second. Construction line, A for angular, 45. You can use a 45. I don't know what was wrong. Well, I don't know what was wrong with me when I was young, but I used to get great pleasure from, instead of having to redraw and recalculate stuff, I used to love projecting stuff over and redrawing it. So what it does is you do the work in one view and you save yourself the trouble on another view. These little things that you remember. Now what the hell is that point doing there? Hold on a sec. Oh, here you go. So, wherever these intersect, I'm just going to make life easier here. Type V for vertical. Wherever these intersect. One. Two. Is that right? Yeah. One. Two. And we go hidden. One. Two. One. Two. Here we go. All right. 
all right let's have a look now what are we missing here um i'm just looking at my window here it's it's uh it's local elections we're getting a lot of politicians coming around knocking on your door and all he goes nuts all right let's just drag that past it a little bit yeah center lines extend and i never liked that but they just extend past the object hidden lines definitely don't now um am i missing anything yeah I am. am i missing anything no i think we're good this this i think that's it let's save that and i'm going to create a new um layer and i'm going to call this dimension and what color are we going to go with some of you and um, we're just going to go with green some of you are dimensioning with a hidden line type don't do that that's don't it doesn't it's not correct that's the first thing and it doesn't look good um now pick pick a pick a color that you can see um i'm going to go to dimension and the dimension is going to be tiny so what do we do we're going to go to dimension stand dimension style modify scale factor let me just read this do i have the right one this is the wrong one sets the scale factor for the linear dimension measurements it is recommended that you do not change this value from the default value of one what that does is it actually changes the dimension number we don't want that this is the boy we want scale for dimension features we can just upscale oh now if we make a 10 is that going to be enough let's try it there we go now why do we need to put a new one in um a little bit too small let's make it 15. too small is it still too small can we re why is it still too small twenty okay modify override compare there we go that's more like it do we need all this precision um now i'll be honest with you the ones who pay attention to my videos in my class they they give me perfect views the students who don't and i know who you are um i know you're not watching this you don't we don't need all this precision all right or 18 now why is this diameter 22 and this one is r18 i'll tell you why whenever you have a full circle 360 degrees you're going to always have a diameter when it's less than 360 degrees it's always going to be a radius okay so i get i get the diameters in first let's get this to there in and let's get this the bigger dimension goes on the outside oh, that's not nice hold on a sec let's try that again that's from another dimension leave it alone all right there to there's 45 there to there is 12 let's bring these lads out a little bit um and i said this to the the my class when i met with them look um you could come up with a great design and you could create a, a, a beautiful drone but if your dimensions are sloppy if your text is sloppy if you're just crisscrossing stuff like like this or whatever your your your, your dimensions are crossing over each other um somebody's going to be second guessing what you've actually drawn it looks poor 
um, 56 here. Like I've just crossed that. Okay, what can we can we do it better? Um, let's put the 12 down here. If you can't be bothered, if you can't be bothered to make nice drawings now, you're not going to be that bothered. You're going to be you're going to be setting up bad habits when you actually get when you're getting paid to make to do drawings. Um, we need a dimension. Have a little bit of pride in your work is what I'm trying to say. Um, let's try that again. Come on now, not not an, an angle dimension. We want it like that, hundred. Let's move these over, like something like that. And that looks nice and clean. The larger dimensions are to the outside. The smaller ones are closer to the object. Now we could probably use the dimension from there to there as well. Okay, I think I've everything there now. All right, what else do I need? 18. From there to there, 63. From there to there, six. From there to there, 12. Now, I'm gonna move this front view down Thirty-two. I'm gonna line it up with this. Oh, look at that! That's nice. Um, thirty-two, twelve, six, eighteen. Um, I'm gonna probably put this dimension in here from there to there. Thirty-eight. Is there anything we're missing? You're not supposed to over dimension a drawing. What that means is you're not really supposed to add a dimension, extra dimension that's need that's not needed. I'm not I don't believe too hardcore on that. Like, do I need to dimension that line there? Not really, because it's 63 from there to there, and we have the 38. So the person just needs to do the arithmetic. Are you gonna get in trouble for adding the dimension? No. There's no harm in putting it in if you want to. It's not going to hurt anyone's feelings. 25. Um, we have the 12. I think I have everything. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to take a quick break. And then we're going to move on. I'm going to line up this right view. with that. Um, t if you can, there's no harm in spreading the dimensions over the three views. This view doesn't have a single dimension on it. It doesn't really need it, but the view is good. You need It helps, it gives us extra information. Whenever you have an object like this and like this, you typically want at least three views, the front, top and right view. Um, I am going to add, we're going to add some more views. I think with this view, I'm going to add a section view. We'll worry about that later. So let's save this and let's get another cup of coffee. Right, I'm back. Um, so at this stage, we have our front top and right view. We've done our orthographic projection. And I'm going to I'm going to draw a three a proper 3D model of this that we can rotate, not isometric. Um, just to be clear, we're doing this in a very inefficient way. It's possible to draw the 3D model first, and then it's possible to generate these views from the 3D model automatically. 
I don't want to do that just yet. Um, and I'm not even going to show you for a few more weeks. You should be able to generate these views based on the drawings. That's I'm trying to teach you that stuff. I'm trying to teach you how to generate views based on orthographic projection. That's It's a pretty critical skill that any drafter worth their salt needs to know. Okay, so hopefully that made some sense. What I'm going to do is, this is what my brain is thinking. I feel like I'm going to draw out this base and extrude it 75. Let's just do that. Let's start with that. Um, and the hell I'm drawing, redrawing any of this stuff because I'm way too lazy. I'm going to highlight that. I click and I let go and then I click and I press control C and I'm going to just drag it over here and click and control um, control V to paste it. Now, let's create a new layer called 3D. And I'm just going to make it white. If I highlight all of this and I and I move, go down to 3D, it should copy it into 3D. Now, I don't need... I don't need these three lines. And notice how I'm getting the green out, which selects all of it. Now, hopefully you remember. <coughs> let's move on to let's let's stay on 3D here. Hopefully you remember we're gonna we're gonna create a region out of this. So I'll just type in region down here. You don't even need to type actually type it. Go down there. I'll just type it in anywhere region. And I click here. And let go and I click here and I press enter now you want to you want to watch out here that it says one loop extracted one region created I've had a student uh, do this and for some reason it didn't create a region the reason why it didn't I, I suspect there was a little hole or a little break in one of, of their lines or they had a line under a line and that was making life difficult now, if I go to the gear and I just go to 3D Basics and I turn this on conceptual, you can see here that what it's done is it's filled in the region and that's a good sign. I'm going to hold down the my shift key and my middle roller ball and I like looking at this. I'm going to remember, what is it, 75? And I'm going to go to extrude. I'm going to click inside the region, <clears throat> press enter, and I'm going to drag this up. Do you see this? And I'm just going to go specify height of extrusion, 75. Now, if I rotate, does it do that rotation limit? Bollocks, it does. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to rotate this object. Now, is it the move gizmo? Rotate gizmo. Click here, and I'm going to grab this red lad, and I want it's it's I love it. Come on now, just like that, and press enter. I don't know. Did you see? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. Rotate gizmo. Click on the object. Um, I grab the red, and I'm I want this. I wanted to. I want to see how it's snapping to that 90 degree. That's what I want. I press enter or press escape to get out of it. And now I got a little bit better command of it. I can rotate around it. If anyone figures out how to change that bloody rotation, I, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Do you know? Now, um, this is the hard part. My brain is saying I should draw this next bit up here. And how do I do it? I need to come up 63 and over 100. From the bottom. So, draw a line. I, I'm going to come up 63, open the Z, do you see that? And I'm going to come over here, see how it snaps to that polar, 
what is it, a hundred? Just see what I'm doing. Now, I don't know. I'm going to draw a circle here, and I don't know what plane it's going to come out as, but let's see what happens. I'm going to draw the circle. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed it worked that, that easily. Why did it pick that plane and it didn't go the other way? We just looked out. I have a feeling some of you are going to try and draw that circle and it's going to draw it on a different plane. Let's say I want to draw, just just bear with me for a second. It's been a while since I've done a lot of 3D. Now, now it, it's doing it on the same plane, but what happens if I wanted to do it on a different direction? If I highlight this face, there it go. See, it's smart. So is it? Is it? Is it that I highlight? What happens if I highlight that face and then I come to here? No, it still does it. Forgive me for a second. Anyway, maybe it's just doing it on the normal X Y plane. It does it on the X Y plane, unless you really make okay. Let, let's not overanalyze. Let, let's not fix something that's not broken. Um, that's just my excuse. Thirty six and twenty two. D for diameter, twenty two. And let's go, now let's create a region. And it does it does a region with the whole thing. If I delete that intersection, no, it doesn't. Um, can I, can I, let, let's just have a look here. If I go extrude, I'm after undoing that for a second. If I select both of them, it don't, wants to do the whole thing. Do I need to extrude it and then and then cut the hole in or can I do a press pull? Can I select inside? There. No. Um maybe I need to maybe I just need to do the full circle first. Let's just let's just play around with this for a second. Region. And then what happens if I subtract this, and then I subtract this? Ah, lovely. So I do the subtraction first. It doesn't matter. You could use the extrude command and just extrude the solid, and then extrude. Use a press pull and extrude the center circle. Um, anyone, anyone that is is following this AutoCAD class. I've never seen you before, so what I suppose what I'm trying to say in my in my my class, you're going to be primed to learn SolidWorks if that's something that you want to do. SolidWorks is going to be good for the more mechanically minded. I know I have some students that are doing civil engineering and structural stuff and work for the government. This ain't going to SolidWorks isn't going to help you. Um, now what is that? It's down twenty five. Wrong way. Let's try it again. Um, do I have to do minus 25? Yep. All right, we're in good shape there. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to come over 36 to get this point, and then I'm going to draw that in. And we're getting this 36 to get that point, and then this. Um, I come over here 36 and then I'm going to draw from there to there and I'm going to trim press enter and 
you know what I should have done? This is um Let me show you, and I'm going to show you the incorrect way of doing this, and then I'm going to show you how we fix it. This is, you're going to like this. We're going to draw that in. We have that, and then we are going from this point. If I come all the way down, I come down, um, forgive me, 25. Is it 25 yet? And we're going to go to that midpoint. And then we're going to come up we have this nice region in here and i'm going to trim that bit of it away no it didn't like that um can i move this point to there let's see how that works this is going to be hard for you to replicate this region nice i'm surprised that works so easily right watch um i'm going to extrude and i'm going to select this um d for direction no anyone that does solidworks is going to know what's going to happen here i'm going to extrude this i'm going to pick a number the problem is is we have this what would you call it a gap a crack it's not going to work what we need to do is is this object we're going to imagine we're going to cut this out later so i'm just going to press pull can i i'm going to un no all right let's just let's leave him alone for a second he's not doing any harm let's undo that region This is tricky enough tricky enough little problem um we need to fill this in this is what my brain is thinking we fill in this hole and we're gonna we're gonna extend or or we can do this or we can do this we can leave it let's go to front let's type in let's go to wireframe and this region we're going to we're gonna i don't know what the, how, how you explain this in english but i'm gonna i'm gonna you'll see now in a second maybe we need to do this in 3d instead of ex, extend extend instead of us extruding it from this line i'm going to extrude it from this line inside the object and we can do that No, we don't want to mess with that now. That line is good. We're going to go from there to there. And. All right. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me just. Hidden. No, that doesn't help us wireframe that helps right um i have this line i have this line i have this line i have that line i have that line this line is part of the cylinder i know i'm bloody i know i'm probably confusing you more uh, is there a line there if I go from there to there, there is a line. See what I just did there? I had to get the blue box going and there. So let's just type in region. You see, this is nice. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to conceptual. And now we have our region and our region is inside of that object, which is okay. And I'm going to go extrude. And I'm going to extrude it six in one direction and six in the other. Let's make it six 
it, it, it did it the other way, which is fine. Press pull and minus six. No, it did it in the other way then. Let's make it six. Okay. Now let's look in here. We have an intersection between these two solids. And I'm going to go union. I'm going to go this and this. I'm going to press enter. And what it does is it makes them one solid now. If some of you um, have money to burn or you have a few dollars and and you, and you don't know what to do with it get yourself a 3d printer it's a it's a very very good investment to learn it's, it's a good technology and um, you we could let's finish it and i'll, and I'll show you how to ex export this as a 3d printer model let's do that first now we need our two circles um what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to hit top, and I'm going to highlight this. Control C, Control V. I'm just going to move it over here. I just copied it, and I'm going to go. I'm going to highlight. Go to copy. Let's try that again. Connect that. Get that top point. Rev rotate this. And I'm highlighting over that surface. I'm not pressing anything. And then I'm bringing it into that point. And I can delete this. And I'm going to go press pull. Um, press pull. And what am I going to do now? Subtract. I press. I click this face. Press enter. And then I'm going to select these two faces, these two solids, and press enter. And I'm going to highlight that sketch. We don't need that sketch anymore that we just used. And now, if I click this face, and I click this, these are still two separate. This is a, a solid, and this is a solid. So let's go union, and select all of these, and press enter. And... If I highlight this, now let's let's if I highlight that and I go shades of grey, that looks good, and I do like that sketchy, and it's slick. I do like that. Pretty sad. Um, how do I export this as a three D model? I've never done this. I only do this with. If I go three D DWF. I don't have a DWF viewer. Express. How do I? If I press F1 and I type in 3D print, 3D printing. Optimize your model for 3D printing. Click the application publish. Oh, and then we go publish. Ah, no, hold on a second. No, I don't think we want that. Publish. Send to 3D print service. The solid model must meet certain criteria before it can be printed in 3D. It says select solids or water type meshes. Boom. Is it? Maybe I need to highlight all of that. Press enter. Oh, we're good. We're good. See this? It 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 sees it, and I'm gonna go OK, and it's gonna save this as an STL, which is your is your is the file that you want. STL is your 3D printed file. Now, it, on my uh, desktop here, I have a Creality 3D, and I have you think I would know? I have a CR10 which is not a bad printer. It's about $400, okay? It is a good skill to have. If you had a choice between spending $400, $500 on a new tablet or four or $500 on a, a 3D printer, my advice is to learn. It, 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 there's great electromechanical troubleshooting and a bit of, of, of learning that to, to keep it running quite well. And 
trust me, it's a good thing to, to learn how to do. Um, I have noticed that it just it made all of this in sketchy, which we don't want. Anyway, that that's how you would export that as a 3D model. And you can be sure as hell if you brought that into Creality or um, a 3D printer um, software. What do I use? I use something called Cura, which is free. Um, it, it's going to work quite well. All right. Now, what do we do? We go to the title block. You're going to not be lazy like me and you're going to fill in your title block. We're going to go um, layout, a base view from model space. I don't know how this is going to work. Um, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do that. That's the other way I want to layout. Hold on, hold on. Layout viewports, rectangular. I'm just going to press enter to fit all of this to the paper and then we're in paper space I'm going to double click on this we're in model space now I'm going to zoom in like so and then I'm going to go back to paper space so what I'm going to have to do we're going to have to go back to model and we're going to move this lad away from the and move, move this away we're going to use the move gizmo and bring him over and let's go back he's no longer there um, layout rectangular I know um, uh, some of you, you get to this stage and you start not really giving a shit because I can tell your drawings are a little bit rough you need to stay the course I'm gonna double click in here in this viewport I'm in model space just in this viewport I have two viewports I have this viewport and I have this viewport and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to rotate this around a little bit and zoom in a little bit more and pan it down and I'm going to go to home and we're going to make this sketchy and it just does that sketchy lovely job and get out of model view I'm telling you made in America I love it now you're going to fill this in and um, if you don't like the sketchy and um, what does x-ray oh god no shaded no way shades of gray that's nice too you can make that on any color you want you would just change the color and the layer god almighty that was a lot of work all right, that's it. That's example number 17. I'm moving on to even harder one, example number 18. I'm going to do a section view of that to show you how to do section views. I'll see you later.